What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be bringing you the best possible streaming settings for OBS in 2025. These settings are exactly what I use. Feel free to tweak them to your machine depending on the power of your PC. You can always tone things down a little bit, but this is a really good starting point. But real quick, before we dive in, if you're looking for some new graphics or emotes or panels or banners, logos, anything like that, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Own.TV. Owned.tv is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full-themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular, so if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is open up our OBS and jump down to the bottom right hand corner here. We're going to click on settings under the general tab. There's nothing here that we really need to mess with aside from source alignment snapping. If you want to enable this, this is going to help you in moving sources and things around in your scenes within OBS. It'll kind of snap them into certain positions. Uh, if you disable this completely, you can just free move everything anywhere you want. Over on the left hand side, jumping down to the appearance section, I use the Yami theme, that's what the coloring here is for my OBS, but feel free to use whatever you please. Next, we're going to jump down to the streaming section. This is where you're going to connect your streaming service. If you're streaming on Twitch, you can log in with your account right here like I have it. Uh, that's why it says disconnect account because I am currently logged in with my Twitch. There is one setting here, though, that we are going to have to check, and that's going to be at the bottom. We're going to check the box that says ignore streaming service setting recommendations. I'll tell you why we did that a little bit later. Moving on to the left hand side under output, make sure you're selecting the streaming tab right here at the top and then advanced instead of simple so that we could see all of our options. Under the streaming settings for our audio track, we want to have this set to one. Our audio encoder is FF MPEG AAC or whatever your default is. You can use a Twitch VOD track, but I won't get into that in this video. I will explain that in another video. Completely ignore that setting for now if you're just setting up your stream. For the video encoder, I have an NVIDIA GPU. I'm using a 3080 Ti, so I'm using the NVIDIA NVENC H.264 encoder. If you have this available as an option, I suggest using this as well. Or if you have an AMD graphics card, use the AMD counterpart. Under rescale output, we want this disabled. Uh, don't touch anything there. That's if we were to be just rescaling our actual streaming output, which we're not going to be doing. Um, down under the encoder settings here, we want to set this to CBR. Our bit rate, we're going to set to 8,000, even if you're not a Twitch partner. Just keep that in mind. That is the setting that we changed earlier up here in the streaming settings. Uh, ignore streaming service setting recommendations. If you have that checked and you set your bit rate to 8K, it allows you to go above that 6K cap that Twitch puts on people. Um, do not put this to 8,001. Do not put this to 7,999. Put it exactly at 8K. If you go one bit rate over 8K, it will automatically de uh, downgrade your stream to 720p. So set your bit rate to 8K. Keyframe interval set to two seconds. Preset, I have mine set to slowest for the best quality, but this is a setting that you can gradually drop down if you're dropping frames in your games or you're getting encoder um, overloading errors or anything like that. I have mine set to seven. I suggest setting it as high as you can at first and then working your way down if you have any issues. Under tuning, we want to set this to high quality. Multi-pass mode, I have mine set to two passes, full resolution. You can drop this down to two passes, quarter resolution, or single pass, depending on your PC again. Profile, we have this set to high. Look ahead is unchecked. Cycle visual tuning is checked. GPU set to zero and max B frames are set to two. Moving on to our audio tab on the left hand side, this is where you're going to set up the audio for your stream. Are you using a standalone microphone? Are you using a Go XLR like I am? Are you using just a headset, a gaming headset and a gaming microphone? That's where you're going to set this up, right? So I'll give you a few different scenarios. If you're using a gaming headset and microphone, 
Your desktop audio, you're gonna set to either your headphones or default if we have all your sound coming through your headphones. And then your microphone, you're gonna select your headset microphone right here. If you're using a Go XLR, you're only gonna have one of these selected and that's gonna be the mic auxiliary audio output and you're gonna set that to broadcast stream mix. And the reason for that is that all of your audio, everything is being routed into the Go XLR and then being routed from there into one output, and that is your broadcast stream mix. So any microphones that you're using would be set up in the mic auxiliary slots here. Any desktop audio that you want to hear, things that you're hearing, would be set up in the desktop audio section. Scrolling down here, there's not much else that we need to do here. There's some hotkeys that we can enable for our audio if you want to mess with those, um, but I'm using a stream deck and a loop deck, so I don't use any hotkeys for anything like that. I use the, the decks for all of that stuff. On the left-hand side, again, under the video section, this is where we're going to set up basically your resolution, right? What are you gaming at? What are you viewing your PC at if you're not gaming? Your base canvas resolution is going to be the resolution of your main monitor, whatever you're doing, whatever you want to show people on, right? I have a 240 hertz 1080p monitor, so my base canvas res resolution is 1920 by 1080. Um, you can downscale this. So if your base canvas resolution is 2 or 4K, you would put that resolution here. We can't select it right now just because we are recording, so it blocks this out. We can't change it. But your base canvas resolution, set that to what your main monitor is. And then your output scaled resolution, if you want to stream in 1080, or 720, that would be the output scaled resolution right here. And if you are downscaling from 2 or 4K uh, to another resolution, then your downscale filter, you would choose Lanxos, which is the third option. And common FPS values, this is the FPS of your stream. Do you want to be streaming in 30 FPS, uh, 34 FPS, 24 FPS, 60 FPS? If you want to be streaming there, that is the number you're going to put here. I have 60 because I'm streaming at 60 FPS. Now, there's a little bit more stuff we can go over, but those are really going to be the meat and potatoes of your streaming settings. On the left-hand side, you can set hotkeys for pretty much anything in OBS right here. Like I said earlier, if you're not using a stream deck or a loop deck, use these hotkeys. You could set them to keys on your keyboard. Maybe you have some macro keys or anything like that. Accessibility, here's some... Uh, colorblind settings, you can change the color of certain things. And then under advanced, there are some important things here as well. Under general at the top, process priority, you want to keep this set to normal. If you switch this to something higher, it's going to allocate more resources to OBS, which would in turn uh, make you drop frames in any game that you're playing or any software that you're using might be a little bit laggier. So you want to make sure this is set to normal. And then scrolling down, you can add an extra stream delay in here, which some people want to do that. I personally don't, but that is where you would add that right here. You can enable the automatic reconnect feature, uh, which I have. So let's say your internet cuts out for like 10 seconds. It doesn't take your entire stream down. It'll give your viewers on Twitch like a, this user is reconnecting, um, you know, screen will pop up um, and you'll have time to kind of when your connection comes back, it'll pick up right where you left off instead of actually shutting your stream down and having to restart the entire thing. And then that sends people more notifications. I automatically would suggest putting this on no matter what. It's not a bad feature. It actually is great. So enable that, set the retry delay to maybe two seconds, and then the maximum retries, maybe have it retry 25 times. Um, and then scrolling down, there's nothing else really important in here. So that's it, guys. Those are the best possible streaming settings you can use going forward, whether you're st setting up your stream for the first time or just tweaking your settings to get it nice and crispy and clear. I always get compliments on my stream. People are like, dude, what are you using? Why is your stream so crystal clear? These are my settings. I wanted to give them to you guys in 2025. Uh, so I hope that I was able to help you all out. And if I did, hit that like button, share this video with anyone who needs it, subscribe to the channel, and jump over to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash hammerdance. We stream Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much. I want you to keep those hammers up, and I'll see you next time.